Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. African mahogany and some quilted maple. And I've got a quilted maple top to put on her as well. Yes, it's upside down right now. It's easier to... I wanted that side to look better because the other side has a top on it, okay? All right. Got ourselves a scarf joint jig. Which had to be a little finagled because uh, this platform on this side was making sure even my big old 10-inch saw blade couldn't quite cut the full length of the neck. This is, by the way, the entire reason I went for a 10-inch table saw instead of an 8-inch table saw. I wanted to cut scarf joints. And check this out. Got my test cut, gluing up just to see how it does from some uh, scrap that I had laying around. And boy, she's a beaut. I think it's going to work beautifully. So excited. Partially because I've tried doing a hand cut scarf joint and it was a horrible failure. I don't know if I just can't use hand saws very well or if I don't have the right kind of hand saw for that, but ooh, it was ugly. This jig makes everything nice, quick, and easy. Man, some days I just, I don't know what to do with myself. I, uh, spent about 10, 15 minutes looking through all my router bits, being like, man, I know, I know I've got a bottom bearing router bit somewhere around here. Double checked, triple checked my bits. I was like, where the hell did I put that bit? It was, it was in my plunge router. It's in, in the one that was sitting right there on the shelf. Not the router I'm about to use, but it was, it was just sitting there in my router. Probably been there for six months in that router because that's the last place I used it. Put your tools away. It makes life easier in the end. All right, we're making some progress on this great guitar build-off thing. Just finished routing our body. Which is looking pretty good if I do say so myself. That is the original body style we're doing this year. I think the uh, strip of quilted maple down the middle came out pretty nice. Of course, this side will all be covered with a quilted maple top. So you have the top that runs into this strip down the side and up and down the back, which I think will look pretty good. And uh, it'll have some bevels and nice things happening on it as well. But uh, I think we're going to wait until we get the cavities and the neck pocket routed before we worry about all that stuff, just to simplify getting those in and lined up properly. I'm excited. It's starting to take shape, but uh, I haven't decided what kind of pickups I want to put in it yet, so I'm going to set that aside for the moment and uh, start on the neck. Excuse the hair. I just woke up. So, did things a little out of order because I'm inherently indecisive, always wanting to do something crazy and deciding whether or not it's feasible. But, started gluing up the neck. Got the main portion of the neck, which is going to be cleaned up considerably, especially once I get that scarf joint recut with the uh, piece down the middle. But that is exactly inversed to the body. Same pieces of wood used for both, just uh, stripped down the middle. And over here I've got gluing up the portion for the headstock. I mentioned before, the beautiful quilted maple I got is actually not long enough to do a full neck, especially with a scarf joint. So we have two pieces that are going to work for that, but it's perfect. Don't worry about it. It's going to be great at the end. I'm excited. And I might, I'm thinking about doing a headstock veneer. I'm leaning toward doing a very nice maple one, but I could do the mahogany. No, I think we're going to do maple because we're going to have a dark fretboard and maple top, maple headstock. Yeah, that looks better. That's probably what we're going to do. So that stripe doesn't go on the front side of the neck, it just goes down the back side of the neck. That'd be cool! It is 160 degrees today. My garage is not air conditioned at all. And today is the day I chose to find the motivation to keep working on this guitar after like two weeks of not doing anything. But on the plus side, we have a neck. Just about. Apart from a little cleanup and some neck carving, we've got a pretty good setup here. And it'll have the truss rod adjustment here at the heel. Hate the idea of the uh, old Fender style heel adjustment ones where you have to like 
reach into the body or on an acoustic or like take off the pick card on an electric. But I like the spoke nut ones. They look kind of cool. So we're trying that this year. See how it goes. All right, this one goes out to all y'all out there still putting up with my videos. We're making some good headway on this great guitar build off thing. First of all, our neck is taking shape nicely. Got a nice volute there at the nut area, which is going to be fine tuned a little bit and get that line sanded out here before long. Got the heel pretty well shaped. Got this gorgeous piece of quilted maple on top of our mahogany body with the maple down the back. And when we're done, we'll probably have it kind of chamfered around the edges with some kind of grooves like I did on this original body that I did with that template. That means that we're going to have the mahogany back with the stripe down the middle that kind of comes up over the edge and then the top kind of stops right about here. So we'll just have this beautiful top stained naturally with some party party colors and uh, we'll see how it goes. Woo baby! We've made a mess today out here. We've got all sorts of woo, sawdust going on. But I think it's a well worth it. Well worth it. Jesus. Here's what we got going. We have the gorgeous top we were doing. Got my pickup uh, mounts routed out there and the neck pocket more or less. And we've got our control cavity right here. We just have to put in a uh, plate for that. And uh, those pickup rings go all the way through because they're going to be rear mounted. So I'm going to have to make another little inset there. And then uh, the deals for the wings to actually screw it down. But hey, making good headway. Welcome to another scorcher in my garage. So we've been doing routing and routing and more routing. And so far we've got a little inset for that battery box, which is a tight fit, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Which I'm then going to route out for a cover to cover it. The, the template for which is gluing up over here. Simple as it is, it works great. And for my other cavities, I've got my control cavity cover. And I've got my pickup cavity cover. Actually, those need to be uh, planed down a little bit so that they actually sit flush with the body, but I'm just happy I got the right shape. I'm going to do that by hand because my planer likes to take big chunks out of that maple for some reason, but I think we're in good shape. Of course, I had to be a little extra with the battery cover and hide it under a little wooden cover as well, but it's going to look cool. <sighs> it is hot out here, but... I'm pretty happy with what we've done today. Got our fretboard, which has gone from this to this. Pretty. It has a compound radius, 12 inch radius at the nut, down to about a 20 on the 24th fret. And yes, I did a full 24 fret. Not because I need to play that high, but because there's just something really satisfying about having exactly three octaves on this instrument. It always bugs me when I get like a Fender or a Gibson or something where it's got 21 or 22 and I'm like, bro, you could just put two more and it would be so much more intellectually satisfying. Here in the next day or two, we're going to be getting this fretboard glued on here. Still have to do the headstock veneer and then fret it, of course. It's going to be a beautiful neck when we've got that top, which is slightly flamed once you get it sanded down right. And then having this going down the back where it's quilted with that mahogany strip. I can't wait to see her done. And I can't wait to get out of this heat. I'm going inside. Believe it or not, this is after I cleaned up around here a little bit. Yikes. Yeah, I've got all sorts of sawdust. Really need some better wood storage. I just, I need to sweep and vacuum. But that's not the point of this video. The point is, I got the fretboard glued on the neck. Oh, she's looking pretty, guys. It'll look even better once I get that veneer on. Yeah, the rubber foot on that clamp disappeared, so we're using a little clamping call with a sanding block that's got cork on the bottom. For any of you out there that are like, hey, you probably should have fretted that fretboard first before you put it on there. Yeah, that's what I did last year. But here's the thing. I really didn't want to take a chance of warping that fretboard at all because it joined up so nicely right now. So I'll just, I'll deal with it and fret it afterward. It's fine. You know the old adage, 
that you can never have enough clamps. If anybody tells you that's false, punch them in the face. Every clamp my poor little shop has right now is in use. In theory, I've got two of those, but I can't find the other one. Just to make sure this top glues on nice and flat. And yes, there will be some glue cleanup afterwards. I spent way more time than I expected trying to make sure everything stayed put and didn't slide around while I was clamping. And now even with a wet rag, some of that glue doesn't quite want to come off easily. So I'm just going to wait until I declamp it and just either sand it or scrape it off. It'll be fine. Ooh, I thought all that rain last night was going to cool stuff down, but it just made it humid. Anyway, I finally got to the part of this build that I've been looking forward to the most which is doing the carve on the top of the body. I was really nervous that it was going to look dumb when I carved through the top a little bit or that I wasn't going to get a nice even line all the way around or just, you know, that something wasn't going to look good. Boy, that turned out perfectly. You get just a little bit of that mahogany around the edge and it just fades straight up into the top. So excited! It turned out even better than I was hoping for, which is saying something because I have lofty ambitions. So we got the back plates kind of sanded and planed down so they're flush with the body, which looks dope. Oh, hey guys! Thanks to the magnanimous generosity of my boss. We have a very nice space to spray our guitar in. And we're getting some clear coat put on today. Let's see what you think. Got our neck, which is looking mighty fine with our logo. We got our beautiful body, which sure is stunning, guys. Mmm, that's looking good. And of course our back plates. Whew, I'm gonna get out of here and breathe some fresh air because uh, I took my mask off a little fast. Guys, 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 guys. I know what you're doing is very important right now, but I gotta show you this. Look at how beautiful the finishing work came out on this thing. I can literally see my own reflection in it. I don't know if I can catch it on camera. Look at that. You can see the reflection on my fingers. That looks better than most of the things I've seen in a guitar store. When did I learn to do that? I don't know, I was too busy doing it. But that's better than I hoped it would be. That's professional. Or at least it looks it. Now I just have to give the same treatment to the neck and all the back plates. <sighs> that's so much more sanding work. Because I had a little more orange peel on the finish spray than I was hoping for. But uh, now that I know what result I can get out of it, I'm ready for it. Okay, so it's not finished yet. But look at this cool idea. I've got my lovely back plates here, which are going to be held in with magnets, which begs the question how do you get those out? Well, how about these lovely little things here that you can just stick any little tool into and pull up? And they're chamfered a bit on the back so you can actually get some grip under it instead of trying to push into it without scratching the finish it's going to turn out pretty cool. I've got the magnets already. I have to get those put in, which I'm probably going to do before I finish buffing the top so that I don't mess up my finish by trying to put those magnets on. I think it's going to turn out pretty cool. I always love the cleanness of having magnet held on covers and I really want it to be totally clean and not have any pulls, but that just wasn't practical for usability. So this looks like a pretty clean solution. And I don't know what I thought I'd been building out here in my shop for the last six months, but uh, after putting the last few pieces together, I was flabbergasted to discover that it's a guitar. It's actually feeling real now. Anybody else get that feeling? Like where it just hits you and you're like, oh shit. That looks good. I mean, she's not just pieces anymore. She's coming together, baby. Just got bridge, electronics, tuners, and nut, and it's done. So you mean to tell me I've actually been making progress on something out here? I haven't just been messing around and making dumb videos for its own sake? Cool.
Oh my god, this is frustrating. Apparently, I had to be super special and do wiring for this guitar, unlike any diagram I can find anywhere. That means I'm the only one who does it this way. Super custom. Basically running two active pickups through five-way super switch, rotary switch, but same thing wiring-wise as a super switch. One volume and one tone. Got everything wired up. Nothing worked. Went back to the drawing board. Found a better way to wire it that I liked better. Wired it all up. Nothing worked. Spent like a week on this damn thing. Started going through it piece by piece by piece. It's like, no, all my solder connections look great. Everything is good. Finally pulled out the battery box. One of the battery terminals was bent in such a way that it wasn't making contact. I just spent like probably five, six hours worth of time cumulatively trying to figure out why these pickups were not working. And it was all because one tiny piece of cheap ass metal was bent at a funny angle. God, I hate working with electronics. And yet somehow that's my profession. Yes, I know the wiring is kind of ugly, but you know, I've redone this twice now and you make do with the wires that you got. And most of my wire is a little bigger than uh, typical guitar wiring because I work on cars. I never thought I'd say 18 gauge was too big. Guitar is finished, videos are up, and today is the day for judging. Let's go to YouTube and watch the announcement video. No video. Delayed? Ten more days? Well, this is just absolute bull- Well, now I've got to find something to do, because I've got nothing to do today. I said I've got nothing to do today. Alright, you don't count. You're a collaborative project and the guy I'm working with is out of town.